it looks really easy if you look at the analyses that say how expensive it's going to be to reduce the risks of climate change by reducing emissions and not to stabilize the climate. And uh, most of the analyses that do that say that the total cost of stabilizing at reasonably prudent levels will be something between a few tenths of percent and one or two percent of loss of future GDP, which sounds pretty small. Um, and the technologies that we need to deploy to do that, we know a ton of them already. There's a bunch more in the pipeline. There's a bunch more that are under development that we can reasonably expect to be available given appropriate incentives. The issue looks really hard if you look at the history of the politics and our attempts to manage it. Basically, after 20 or 30 years of mounting scientific concern, we've achieved very little either nationally or internationally. Periodic uh, instances of seeming hope through events like the Bali meeting a couple of years ago usually dissipate within a year or two, precisely as we're seeing now in the run-up to Copenhagen. And the intensity of opposition to anything beyond trivial and symbolic measures to reduce emissions remains high in the United States and is increasingly high in Europe as well, which has you know, up till now been the jurisdiction that's been leading on greenhouse gas policy. So depending on how you look at it, it's really easy or it's really hard. We won't prove in advance that it's cheap and easy to cut emissions. We'll have to start trying to cut them and thereby, probably, in my judgment, we'll discover that it's actually not that expensive or not that difficult. So research universities have a ton of contributions to make. First, in doing the work of the technology development to kind of refine, deploy, and spread out all of the innovations throughout the energy system that are likely to allow us to reduce emissions, and also to doing the analytic and policy-related work of kind of showing how the whole system fits together. I think it's important to note that the single most crucial element of government policy to help move us toward the required energy transition to limit climate change is putting some economy-wide measures in place that put a price on emissions. And those are not policies that require picking winners at all. It requires picking the form and the level of the incentives that you put on. So the main suspects here are cap and trade systems carbon tax systems or combinations of the two that have some elements of cap and trade and some elements of carbon tax systems. Uh, those things are essential. Those things are the primary instrument to motivate the uh, innovation and investment necessary to move us toward a uh, greenhouse safe or climate safe economy. Certainly in current conditions of you know, economic recession and high unemployment and so on, there's actually multiple compelling reasons to support public expenditures on technology related R&D demonstration projects, even diffusion. You know, these are actually powerful instruments in terms of increasing employment. I am quite skeptical about the prospects for any significant progress at Copenhagen. I am also quite skeptical, skeptical about the prospects for significant progress through any international forum like the Framework Convention and Kyoto Protocol that is universal in its participation. Basically every nation in the world is in the room negotiating. Uh, interestingly, such a group, such a consultative group was established uh, by the Bush administration and then the consultations have continued under the Obama administration. And there even is an institutional vehicle that would be a suitable place to have such negotiations. It's called the G20. It's a group that actually is more representative of the nations of the world, is big enough in terms of its scope, kind of the size of the global economy that they represent, that they could do stuff that would exercise a very substantial effect on world emission trends, and yet is small enough in number that they can have a focused effective negotiation where they're really kind of exchanging things of value to everybody so that they're bargaining an effective deal rather than just a, a symbolic superficial political one.